So I ran a coding session with Droid that hit over 7 million tokens, and it didn't forget a single thing. For real. But how is that even possible? Y'all know the drill with other agents. When you get pretty deep into a session, boom, it completely forgets your plan. It ignores your instructions, and then you have to start a new chat, which is so exhausting. And I don't know about you, but I'm so tired of being gaslit by context windows. It's actually one of my biggest bottlenecks. So today, we're not just gonna talk about it. I got Luke Aboyero, one of the engineers who actually built Droid at Factory AI, to come on the stream and actually break down the magic. And you know, there's not gonna be any hype here. It's just us actually getting into the weeds of how this works from engineer to engineer. We're gonna cover anchored summaries, agent scaffolding, and how they build an agent that actually stays on track. So let's get into it. To me, this feels like magic, and how can I get a continuous session like this without resetting or creating a new chat window and so forth? Context is definitely something that we thought very, very heavily about. First of all, thinking about context as a as like a, as like a problem that continually you have to address throughout that session lifecycle. Uh, and then thinking about it from like an iterative perspective. Uh, specifically, we think about context as something that grows and then at some point you have to compress kind of the, the, the session uh, back into a state that is manageable. We've seen that uh, typically LLM models operate at, at an ideal context window of about probably 140K tokens. And so if we can make sure that we're within that like sweet spot, uh, we're delivering the best experience to our users. Once you reach, let's say, that 140K token window, let's just compress everything, right? Hey, you know what's happening? We're spending a lot of time kind of after we do these compression points, refiguring out what needs to happen inside of the session. So you'd start exploring files again. And so what we really found was and there's a few core things that regardless of how you compress, need to stick around in the same form, right? You need to kind of hotwire the model to have the latest like changes uh, that, that have been made inside of the session. You need to also provide it with uh, something that's really important is like the to-do list that is getting worked on, right? You start adding um, a lot more kind of tooling and scaffolding around that that uh, compaction like kind of methodology methodology that you first implemented. And then all of this, you know, you have to still keep in mind how do we do this from a problem caching perspective? that feels append only to the model so that everything feels just as fast as you know your session up until that compaction point uh, normally feels. That's an incredible like exploration because there's so many different avenues here to like if somebody just says, are you just uh, some type of wrapper around Claude Sonnet or Codex or these types of things? it's actually kind of insulting because that means you're not paying attention to these little details. How you compress information, how the model behaves after the next step, like you're saying, to gather this information, that can take up more context. And then one of the problems I have in some of these platforms, especially as a context window grows, I notice it doesn't really follow my agent's MD file as it usually does, but with the Droid session throughout the 7 million <laughs> token session and the subsequent one yesterday that we just did live was like 6 million tokens, it kept staying on track. I didn't have to keep reminding it certain things. Like what are you also doing there as well? I think it would be uh, naive to, to say that like the LLM will gather everything correctly, right? So it's on us to, to make sure that the LLM sees the correct things. And as I mentioned, you know, to, the to-do list was one important thing that we that we identified early on as like, this needs to persist. But like you're saying, stuff like Agents MD, the recursive structure for Agents MD, making sure that's always loaded into a session is incredibly important. What's nice is I don't have to remind it that I'm working on my spec file. So I want to talk a little bit more about like specs and plans and what does that mean? Because I, I see plan mode in various apps and then, you know, Claude Code, Cursor has plan mode too. And everyone's kind of introducing this concept and you guys have spec mode. Is there a difference? Is it just naming, marketing? Like what's the, what's kind of the intent there? There's, there's obviously similarities, right? Cloud codes plan mode is, is incredibly capable, but the way I would frame kind of how we stand out here is Claude is thinking uh, more about 
the plan from a perspective of what is the agent going to do next, kind of like a step-by-step goal of um, you know getting you to the end state that you described in your initial prompt, right? We think about spec mode more as like a holistic specification for building software. And specifically, like if you think about how you would hand off working from like that PRD phase of building kind of a document that outlines exactly what you want and then moving into engineering design and then eventually building kind of a prototype or something like that, there's multiple stages and multiple like requirements that you're hitting along the way. If you haven't used droids or spec mode yet, I would suggest going into session and using the shift tab uh, like hotkey to move straight into spec mode. Uh, and get started with your sessions that way. That is like by far the most successful way to, I think, use Factory right now. And we're going to specifically be rolling out a bunch of enhancements to that style of workflow in the, in the coming like weeks. Can you talk a little bit more about what anchored summaries are and kind of what that really means technically, I guess, or like in more detail? So these anchor points, um, if you think about like the message history that you are kind of conversing with an LM, there's naturally a a, a, a me- that leads to us considering, hey, this 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 session is now kind of out of the context limit that we would consider to be optimal. And so whenever we reach those, those points, we say, okay, we have to now summarize a lot of the messages that have, you know, that have happened in this session thus far, structure them in such a way that we do capture intent, you know, the overall approach, these like clarification questions that the user may have asked, still capture stuff like our to-do list, capture stuff like agents and me that we discussed before. Uh, but th- those messages are what we consider to be the anchor points, right? So whenever compression does occur, we anchor to that message and we say everything before this needs to get compressed. We need to like summarize it. And we do that using an LLM. And then I think that the next question is, okay, what happens when you hit that anchor point again, or sorry, hit that compression point again? what happens to the message that becomes the anchor point that previous message that was the anchor point now has you know let's say 100 more messages after it has hit that that we've now hit that like compaction threshold and so we take that first message which has uh, you know a lot of uh, detailed information about the session thus far give it a lot of weighting um in our lm summary that comes next and then also provide kind of all of those same uh, messages that follow and to the to-do list, the agents MD, make sure that all that is respected correctly uh, when we do our next summarization. We've tried like complicating this more and making it um, you know, a, a more advanced system. But I think what we've ultimately found is that we need to ship an experience that's like bug-free in order for adoption to, to really kind of take off the way that it has. And so uh, making sure that our system is simple but like very well thought out with all of those like addendums that are important is, is I think like um, what has made management um, like solution really, really strong. You've dropped this word before, and I guess it's the word called scaffolding or agent scaffolding. And everyone's today is talking about prompting, uh, context management and so forth. Let's talk a little bit more about scaffolding and kind of what that means as well for the audience. The core thing to, to understand here is there's hundreds of behavioral, just like configurations and different patterns that are embedded within any agent tool that you're, that you're building. And so these manifest in the form of stuff like system notifications, tool descriptions, the way that tools are actually implemented, the timeouts that you provide to tools, how long you even plan on waiting for like an LLM response, right? The way that you prompt cache uh, and the way that your message uh, history is structured, as well as something like a, a model agnostic harness, right? That that sort of works well with any model that you that you plug in. We really need to be- make sure that whenever we onboard to a new model, we, we give it all of the capabilities that every other really good model has. So one of the, the things that I think is like important to call out is um, nowadays, OpenAI uh, style models have some some like specific way that they prefer to run tools, right? So specifically around like editing and creating files, they have this tool called Apply Patch, that is a very like proprietary way of applying a diff to a certain file. Whereas you know the Anthropics of this world are using a different style of of, of tool, which is more of like a find and replace uh, based on on text and kind of like your your Git diff. Um, format that naturally leads to like 
you know, if you had just plugged in a new model and tested it out, you would actually see like significantly degraded performance if you were not using those custom tools that are specific to each one of those models. So that's an example of like scaffolding done right, where you have you have built out scaffolding that's model specific. And again, to folks building agentic products out there, I would actually like start with that design choice in mind. But this like scaffolding is something that I would consider to be like the new way that we should be talking about building agents because it's like holistic, right? Like just because your context management system is great doesn't mean that your agent is great because there's other things that go into it. Another example of this that I can provide is like how you think about uh, speed. Right. One of the pitfalls of our current web app experience is around the speed because it was built for like a different model uh, with different capabilities, specifically that being like uh, Sonnet 3.5 back in the day. Now our CLI is built uh, with the latest models in mind and kind of since it was like a relatively like newer project has like a lot better prompt caching for for like the, the tasks that we that we kind of run inside of these sessions. So specifically thinking about a message history that's append only, right, in order to never break the cache means that you are operating inside of sessions much, much quicker, which leads to better outcomes and faster outcomes for your users. Um, and naturally, like keeping things linear inside of a session also gives the, the agent some grounding as to like what occurred in the past. If you're like pulling messages in and out and trying to manipulate context in that like what I would call like more advanced way, you're actually in some ways shooting yourself in the foot because you're kind of confusing the model as you go. That is fascinating. So there you have it. It turns out the secret sauce isn't even a massive context window. It's actually the whole system and how they built it to manage it. So that includes the whole concept of anchored summaries to make sure that the agent never forgets the to-do list and agent scaffolding to make sure that the tools are actually optimized for the specific model you're using. That's crazy fire. And that's actually the difference between an agent that helps you and one that you constantly have to babysit and pull out your hair with. I don't know about you, but if you wanna go ahead and try this, the best way is to go ahead and start a session just by hitting shift tab. This will get you straight into spec mode. And that's actually the pro workflow that I want you to go ahead and try and see if you can actually break it. Let me know in the comments below how many tokens you end up hitting before they gets really weird. A single person in my Discord ran one session for 44 million tokens before it got really crazy. And I want you to leave that number below because this is about to get really insane. And just as a disclaimer, Factory AI did sponsor my previous live stream. And you know what this means. They actually hooked us up. And you can use my link, rfer.me slash rayfactory to get 40 million free tokens if you want to go ahead and try this out yourself. And tomorrow, we're going to go back to building more features in Anime League. That's my recent Nano Banana app. And if you want to go ahead and see me push it to its limits, make sure you stay subscribed so you don't miss it.